let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born this day of a pure virgin. Grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you in the same spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, beginning at the second verse. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and for the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, beginning at the 14th verse. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those who he favors. Here ends the reading. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas. It is um, a Christmas not quite like one that I can remember, at least in my own living history. But it is Christmas all the same. I love the way time works like that. Ready or not, willing or not, it marches on and marches again, both forward and cyclically, all at the same time. I think this year is an opportunity for us to, to understand, perhaps in a different way, what it might have been like that first Christmas, just cozy and intimate at home with our families, perhaps with a small gathering, perhaps with none at all. No pomp or circumstance, no, I don't know, decorations, no, you know, Christmas wasn't a thing in, in, until this very moment in our 
in our religious history. And I think about that, and I think about, well, who would I be in this story? If we're going to experience Christmas like it was that first day, the day Jesus was born, who am I in this story? Who do I relate to? Uh, how do I make sense of this experience that we're in together? Because if you're celebrating with me right now, you're at home. You're not here at church with me. And so um, how are we to understand the Christmas story this year? And then, and then you read the passage about the shepherds keeping watch in the fields over their flock by night. And I thought, that's it. That's us. We are shepherds. And we're, we're afar, we're, we're spread afar from, from where we would want to be, where the Christmas celebration happens, right? Where the incarnation is, is made known and manifest for the first time. We're somewhere far afield, and we're watching over our flocks in the darkness. And you're tending to your family or to yourself or to your pets. And the world is full of darkness. And yet, even though we're, we're spread afield, we're not together in the church building this morning, even though things are different this year and family gatherings can't happen the way we would hope for them to and there weren't big, giant celebrations in the streets or mass Santa visits, even still, the news, the good news of Jesus Christ coming into the world finds us. In a nondescript field, far away from the manger, in the darkness, under the most impossible circumstances, just tending our own little flocks, the glory of the Lord shines maybe even more brightly than we would have noticed otherwise. The good news that Jesus Christ is born, that God, in God's infinity, in God's vastness, humbled enough to become human, to become finite, to become bound to human form and time and suffering, so that we might know intimately in our bodies, bodily, in our bones, the love and redemption of God in our lives. We hear the Christmas message every year, and it can become numbing. Ah, oh, we do it every year. Yeah, Jesus is born, baby Jesus, it's great. Celebrate, presents under the tree. Santa came, it's drink hot chocolate. Make eggnog. But this Christmas, as the world is kind of turned upside down, I appreciate for the first time in some ways, and, and in certainly in new ways, what a gift it is to be loved by God, to share that love with you and with my own family, my own flock, to feel it so deeply, to know that God cares so much that instead of residing in the vastness of space, God chose to come and dwell among us, to be us, to be with us, and whatever that meant, to serve in, a, in such a way that someone else had to had to change his diapers. I don't know if diapers existed 2,000 years ago, but um, that's certainly not the image that we typically have of God. But that that love is so deep and vast and strong that it can make it through even that, that even that would not deter God from joining with us. So this Christmas, I hope the glory of God finds you wherever you are, in the darkness, 
far afield, tending your flocks. I hope the angel of the Lord has made known the good news to you. Here we are in your living room or your kitchen. Jesus Christ is born. God is with us, among us, in the flesh. And we can celebrate and remember that and look even more earnestly to God's coming again. Merry Christmas. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city wherewith the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you sent your own Son into this world. 
We thank you for the life of your child, Jesus Christ, entrusted to our world. Help us to remember that we are all your children, and so to love and nurture one another that we may attain to that full stature intended for us in your eternal kingdom. For the sake of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.